What's a pen without a box? Good morning and welcome to my workshop. In today's video I'm going to do pen boxes. Now my previous batch I did doubles and singles and this batch is for slimline pens. In this video or in this project I'm going to do pen boxes with a larger groove for my bigger pens for instance the Celtic pen, the Phoenix pen, the cigar pen and so on and so on and then the wood I'm going to use is this piece this is spalted beech and as you can see, it makes a very, very nice pen case. The first thing to do is prepare a cutting list. And then I'm going to start off with ripping this piece of wood to the different thicknesses. Then put it on the planer, do the thicknessing. And then back on the saw, cut them all to length. I'm going to fast forward through most of these steps. And this is at least a two day project. So after each phase, I'll do a bit of an update and then hopefully we'll have good results and see you in the next update now what i've done from the previous batch i kept pieces as samples because i, I knew i was going to do some more and then I like making jigs, so I've got cutting jigs, I've got sanding jigs. Jigs always makes your life a lot easier. Now I have to adjust the size on these. If you look at the router bit, I'm going for obviously for the bigger groove, so I have to make my doubles and singles just a slight bit bigger okay I'm just about done with my cutting list so let me finish that and then I'll start ripping All the rippings done uh, to save some wood I also gone I've gone and split the wood as well so it's time to thickness it's spalted beach so there's a little bit of dry rot in the wood so I hope I don't waste too much so let me get thicknessing and see how this goes planing's done I've just set up the router so I'm ready to router so there's a lot of things to keep in mind now what I've done 
I split the wood for a reason. Now this one piece that I split and I've marked it. The one side is going to be the base and the other side is going to be the lid. And if you open them, the wood will match. <clears throat> there's, there's lots of things to take into consideration. Now, I've done the sample piece and I've put it off center. So you'll, you'll see this on the one side, on the right hand side, it's a lot narrower than the left hand side. The side, the left hand side that's wider is going to be the hinge side. And once you hinge it away, you'll, it will be easier for you to lift the pin. And then the lid gets routed on three sides and the base gets routed on two sides. Okay, so let's start routering. All the routering is done. I'm happy with the progress. And I'll show you the side profile. So the next step before I cross cut is to do all the sanding in its lens. Then do all the cross cutting to length. Now it's very important to choose the correct length. Now check all your pens for length and then very important pencils are normally a bit longer. So a pencil can fit in this one. After the cross cutting, more sanding, putting it all together. And then to finish it off, the coating of wax oil afterwards. Yeah, so that is the end of day one. Just a little bit of cleaning up to do and packing away. And then I'll be back in the morning with the rest of the cutting and sanding and assembling and oiling. Good morning, welcome back and let the sanding begin. The sanding is going very well. I'm just about done with all the sanding. Now earlier on I spoke about using jigs and anything to help you through your process. Now I've kept two pieces that I still need to sand just to show you one of my jigs or an example of a jig with the previous batch of slimline pin cases I used this to sand the grooves and now with the bigger groove I had to remake this jig. Now let me show you. <clears throat> And there's your 18 mil diameter. A little bit easier to sand. Now the routering I'll do a bit later on. But this is the jig and let me show you how I use it. As easy as that nicely sanded so I'll have one more to do and then I'm gonna set up the saw and start cutting okay I'm, uh, I've done all the sanding I'm ready to cut now there's a little trick in the cutting you've got your top and your bottom and it gets two sides. Now the lid opens, but you don't want the lid to be the same size. It must be a hair thickness shorter, just so that it opens a lot easier. So what I've done, now all, all these are paired. Now I'm 
make sure that the lids are showing to the bottom and on my cutting fence I've put a little bit of tape which is well that's a hair thickness um, just enough to give you clearance for your lid okay so let me show you as you can see the lid is facing downwards and there's a little bit of tape so what I do is I cut these in pairs so if you look the lid will be slightly shorter than the rest That's just about all the cutting done. I'm actually very happy I got 23 of each. 23 doubles and 23 singles. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it, but I can feel it. The lid is a millimeter, well not even a millimeter shorter. So that means it will open a lot easier. I'm happy with the progress so far. So all the, the boxes are cut. All I need to do now is cut the end pieces and then I'm ready for gluing. Well, all the cutting's done, all the end pieces Two different sizes or all cut to size and now it's just about organizing the workflow and then I can start gluing I've started gluing and I'm going to show you exactly how I do that so I start off with the lid and I take a piece of masking tape and I paste it on either end like that so the hinge side goes to the back and then I choose two end caps put a bit of glue on either side and clamp it together there you go this one is clamped the masking tape on either side has two purposes one to make up for the lid spacing because remember it's a fraction of the hair shorter and secondly the tape masks the lid so that the glue doesn't glue the lid as well so I've got a bit of gluing to do so I'll just fast forward started the assembly process I did the single just for a test and I did the double for a test okay so I'll show you exactly how I do it so I have another jig so I insert the pin boxes in there or the pin cases and then I have a drilling hole for the pins that ends up to be the hinges so I put one of these on either side I make sure that the hinge side is to the back I draw both sides I insert the, the pin and I just sand it off on the sander so I'll just fast forward through the whole process and I'll see you on the other side As you can see all the boxes are assembled and now for the final sanding just rounding the corners and then the last step is the oiling now I've made another jig and I've used my belt sander and this this is my setup 
So it's very easy just to take the, the box and just sand it like this. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to fast forward through all this and I'll see you on the other side. Just oiling and then it's finished. 23 of each. A good two days work. So I'm very happy. And now for the oiling. This is what I use. This is a, a German product. I used it on the previous batch and I'm very happy with this. This brings out the grain. I'm going to oil one and show you. Look how this brings out the grain. Actually, let me show you the lid. That will give you a good idea. Look at that. The wood comes alive. The oil soaks in. So it gives it a nice matte look. Excellent. And the admin as usual. Please subscribe to my channel. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. If there's any comments or any questions, let me have them in the comment section below. And don't forget to ring the bell for more videos like this. And until the next time, state your case.